Hello everyone, welcome to a little presentation about load performance in single page applications. A quick introduction from my side. My name is Christian Obernberger. I am a front-end architect and a chapter lead at Netconomy. We're partnering with SAP and we're delivering fast and responsive touch points for our clients. Good. Then let's start with a small review on single page applications. In the last decade or so, we saw on-premise applications move into the cloud. We saw big, chunky uh, application monoliths transform into microservice architectures. And we also saw touch points moving away from the backend and closer to the users. Um, why are we doing that? Well, um, dynamically rendering a touch point for human interaction is kind of expensive, costs CPU power, and is also a bit meaningless for the backend anyway. So with single page applications, the user's own device does that for us, which is kind of neat. So there's less load on our systems and a better user experience for the client because there are no more page loads. Um, only the initial load for the whole touch point could be a problem though, because now we have to ship a big JavaScript bundle to the user. And for back office applications, that might be fine, but usually if you're running a website on the public internet that's searchable and you want traffic on there, uh, load performance becomes incredibly important now and even more important than it was before. So here's an incomplete list of things you can do to improve performance in a single page application. There's pre-rendering, that is uh, server-side rendering and static site generation. There's rehydration and partial rehydration. There's chunk splitting, there's critical style inlining, there's lazy loading. And they all sound complexer than they even are and, and frameworks can help, but uh, it, it, I could have gone on writing those for a couple more slides, but you get the idea. Uh, what do you need to do, though, in order to see where you're starting from in terms of performance? And if anything that you're doing actually has any effect at all, you need to start measuring performance of your touch point. I'm kind of flying through this. So let's talk about measuring performance. If you're working as a, as a front-end developer, uh, you've probably heard of or used Lighthouse somehow. And there are other tools too, but they're also kind of looking by now what Lighthouse is doing a lot lately, so let's use it. Uh, it is developed and maintained by Google. It gives meaningful standards across websites. Um, check out especially the core web vitals if you haven't yet. Um, it's open source, it has a command line, so it's super cool and it's also super accessible. So you can access, this, access them via the, the Chrome DevTools. Uh, there's paid speed insights and all those places. Um, but that accessibility also has some caveats. Uh, people sometimes use Lighthouse in a way that doesn't really give them accurate results. So here are some do's and don'ts that we found helpful in the past uh, while we're looking at performance. First, run on adequate hardware. Um, as a developer, uh, measuring things on your big and beefy develop developer computer will likely give you better results, no matter how much Lighthouse throttles the test in the background. But then again, if you're doing processor-heavy uh, tasks, or maybe you're in a Zoom meeting with uh, screen share enabled and all that stuff, uh, and you run Lighthouse, you might have significantly different results again. So if anything, scroll down your Lighthouse sheet, uh, you will find a CPU benchmark there, and Lighthouse measures the power of your machine, uh, and that benchmark relates to your result as well, so be careful with that. Um, Next point, check your code as much as your content. Um, imagine you are measuring your performance 
and you get a result and you start developing some improvements, uh, deploy them a couple of days later. And then there are three new images on your page because a CMS manager has gone rogue. Um, also not an ideal case, test something that doesn't change that you can use as a reference point. So for example, an Impressum would be a good place to start with. Uh, and, and next, check the docs in the GitHub repository. I know it, it sounds a little bit counterintuitive because there's so much documentation on Lighthouse all over the place anyway. Uh, but if you're a developer and you really want to get into how Lighthouse works and how the score is calculated and what you can do with, um, with your machine to get more accurate results and all these things, um, look at the GitHub repository in detail. They have a great document section. Uh, you will be happy. Good. Then coming to the don'ts. Uh, don't measure what is not part of your code. Uh, we've seen our clients use tag manager software, analytics, they, they, they do crazy stuff like generating heat maps of your clients uh, <laughs> or, the, or the users while they're running your website. And that is like an extra layer on top of your own code. And of course, as an end result, it's always good to, to measure the overall performance. So you can get a sense of that and where you are. Uh, but if you want to find out how you can improve your own code, don't measure tag managers. It doesn't make sense. You can simply block them out using um, uh, the, the dev tools uh, built in network re request blocking. And you can also do the same thing when you're using the CLI. It doesn't work for page speed insights though, which is kind of a shame. Um, next thing, don't use your main Chrome profile for performance measurements. Uh, this should be pretty clear, but uh, still a lot of people don't do it. Uh, set up a, a Chrome profile, give it a nice color that it's punchy and you can see this is my, my performance measurement profile. Uh, disable all the plugins, it will help you not only with measuring performance, but also when you go into the details of your analysis as well. And uh, last point with the don'ts, don't measure only once for a meaningful result. Uh, uh, this one is important because there's always variance. Of course, every time you load a page, uh, there are slightly different network conditions, especially on the public internet, especially with uh, connections and all that stuff. So no two page loads are ever fully the same. Uh, the recommended uh, amount are five runs at least. Um, do that, you will really get a more accurate sense, especially if you measure over a long time. Good. And the last thing that I want to leave you with is uh, if performance is at all relevant for you, set up performance monitoring. Measure changes in performance over time and display them somewhere. We are using Grafana for that and I, I, I put a little screenshot um, here on the slide. Uh, that gives your measurement also dedicated environment, so you don't really need to uh, worry so much about your browser profile and what your personal CPU load is at the time. Um, it can just run in the background and do the measuring for you. And also, uh, you can get a lot more data from that because you can compare things. Uh, you can, you can see, actually see response times and Lighthouse gives you a lot of data that you can work with and you can use that to improve your page speed performance. Good, that is it from me. I hope this was helpful to you. And take a look at netconomy.net slash careers. See you around.